this uh, little talk is based on some thinking I've been doing as part of a wider project. Um, it's very much uh, 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 unfinished work, uh, something that I'm thinking about. Um, and um, based really around my own kind of perceptions as a citizen. Uh, there's some additional work gone on around this by a number of people, not least uh, a little lobbying group called None of the Above, which was established in 2010. I don't have anything to do with them, just having read their work. Uh, so it's very much preliminary thoughts about uh, an initial observation, uh, observation about uh, 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 enabling electoral disenchantment to be expressed and recorded at an election. Um, Willie Whitelaw, who was Mrs. Thatcher's deputy prime minister in the 1980s, once famously accused Labour politicians in the 1970s of going around the country stirring up apathy. Uh, I'm not entirely uh, interested in doing that, although my good friend, our good friend, uh, uh, Agnes, and my good friend, Will Brown, sent me a text saying he wasn't coming today because he was busy turning out the vote for Labour in Sheffield Hallam. So, um, but I actually want to try to turn out the vote and to allow people to participate at greater level if they are either apathetic or if increasingly they are alienated. So this little project comes from a wider project, which is about the nature of the British political class. There's a book I'm writing about why I think the political class uh, across all sides of the House of Commons is increasingly unfit for purpose and in need of radical and uh, revolutionary reform. We'll be referring to that later on in this little talk. Um, the working title for the book is uh, 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 Get the Bastards Out, quote unquote, which may indicate uh, uh, the normative agenda that I have in writing this piece uh, as someone who is disaffected uh, and who uh, uh, is disenchanted and cannot express that electoral disenchantment at an election, although I did so today. Uh, casting my vote. Uh, I live in North London in a very nice middle class, lucky enough to live in a nice middle class left liberal neighbourhood. Uh, I like that because it means there's coffee shops, bookshops, lots of places where I can buy scented candles and all of these useful things. But it means that me as a small C conservative who's not particularly in tune with the large C conservative party is pretty much disenfranchised when the electoral choice is uh, strictly between Labour and Liberal Democrats, and when the vote in one ward will not determine the outcome of the uh, 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 borough elections in the London Borough of Harringay in which I live. Uh, if it were to, then I would probably make a choice between a lesser evil, and in my case, I would vote Liberal Democrat rather than Labour, but Labour is certain to hold the borough. So I went, which I often do, given where I find myself, and that is a spot on my ballot, what I do is I collect my ballot because I believe it's a civic duty to attend and vote. I get my ballot, I put a big X across the middle of it, sometimes photograph it, send it to my chums and then cast it in the ballot box. And then when all the election uh, uh, ballot boxes from the ward or the constituency are counted, it's, it's looked at, it's counted as a spoilt ballot. And I'm considered perhaps not unreasonably, not as a, a person who cannot make a political choice because I dislike the choices available to me, but as a moron or an idiot who can't fill up a ballot correctly, if it's put on the waste count, waste pile, it's not counted, it's not recorded. Whereas from my mind, it's a, it's a determined abstention. It's indicating none of the above, that I don't want any of them to be elected. Uh, I would like uh, a, a new choice to take place. Okay, so that's the question. So voting for none of the above, enabling electoral disenchantment to be expressed at an election. And that takes me to two initial observations. Uh, uh, the first is that uh, uh, electoral disenchantment expressed in non-voting reflects both apathy and increasing alienation on the part of registered voters. Presently, battle, ballots which are deliberately spoiled go uncounted, so citizens should be able to register a refusal to choose between presented an election. Now, this has a honourable tradition in terms of having minority status. There are very few places in the world in which it is, it is enacted. Uh, uh, Bulgaria, Spain, India and Bangladesh to some degree have used the ability to register none of the vote. In the case of India in 2014, some six million people availed themselves of that choice. It was rather extraordinary, but this was just recorded and had no impact. 
on the election in terms of that it's none of the above and noted uh, rather than recorded as an outcome. Rather famously, in the uh, uh, elections uh, 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 determining the future of communism in Poland in 1989, a lot of Polish citizens registered their refusal to vote for endorsed communist candidates by scrubbing out the candidate's name, which meant that they didn't reach the criteria and didn't get elected. And of course, in the elections for the Congress of People's Deputies in the Soviet Union, say in 1990, the same thing happened, which meant that over 100 endorsed candidates of the CPSU weren't elected. So, so none of the above has some honourable traditions in terms of opposing authoritarian regimes in practice. Uh, in the UK, rejected ballots are discounted. If they're mistakenly uh, uh, completed, they are set aside. Uh, uh, and those that uh, uh, the, the returning officer following advice from the candidate's agents can interpret where a mistaken ballot uh, uh, is, is returned, where the voter's intention can be ascertained. But that, of course, is making the choice between those that are available. So there's some tradition, but it's a very minority position. The Green Party not often in alliance with, uh, or agreement rather, the um, open nominations. And that's a, a policy of theirs that they, they don't promote very much, but, but, but the party congress or their conference did vote for it. So the second one then is to argue that that, that, that refusal to choose would be recorded and returned as part of the electoral process, achieved by adding that box and reporting as a fact, the number actively abstaining in an election. So it would be a reportable fact. You would say this number of people have voted none of the above, and it would return just in the way that you record and report the votes for the parties that present themselves for people's consideration. Um, so recording uh, and reporting abstentions would, I suggest, permit citizens to formally uh, record, there's a word missing there, their dissatisfaction, uh, to enable the disenchanted to participate, uh, 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 to allow citizens to chastise the political class by refusing to choose amongst them, and would help boost turnout. We don't know by what degree uh, uh, that would happen. I don't imagine people would be uh, uh, running to the polls to register their disapproval. But if we look at the level of dissatisfaction that we find measured across all all, all countries, we could see that that's that's pretty significant. And um, in the uh, the French elections, the recent French election, where only 27% uh, uh, of those casting a vote in the first ballot paired their strong support for the incumbent who was eventually re-elected, we saw high levels of, 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 of disaffection. Uh, and the choice uh, was described by many uh, people as being between the devil and the deep blue sea. Or the phrase uh, uh, was uh, 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 the diabolical, or the or the less than pleasant. So it, it's quite common, and I think that to help uh, uh, to alongside other forms of electoral and political reform, and, and of course there are much more important reforms we need to make in terms of uh, strengthening and hardening our democracy. I think recording uh, uh, and reporting electoral abstention will play some modest part in that purpose. Um, so that brings me to the importance of voting. Well, I mean, it's, it, it, doesn't, it goes without saying that it's an essential part of the of, of liberal democracy. Uh, it's an issue, a right, the civic right that has many people have fought for in a variety of forums over a number of years. Uh, uh, it, it is a way in which you can throw the rascals out or put another set of rascals in. It's a way in which the citizenry can make plain their uh, their beliefs and opinions to the political class in Parliament. Uh, the prospect of electoral impending electoral defeat may concentrate the minds of incumbents. Anticipated reaction is often a way in which the political class in Parliament elected has to anticipate uh, the possibility of not being re-elected, and therefore that uh, 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 has an influence on them beyond and between elections. So the importance is, of course, essential, even if we take a Schumpeterian view that it's simply choosing between circulating competing elites 
uh, 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 and is a limited form of, of electoral participation, it is nonetheless, if limited, an extremely important one. Uh, there are, of course, the limitations of voting, that it is about choice, not preference, uh, uh, and, uh, and that has a significant impact, particularly now that the electors are much more discerning, much more volatile, ties of attachment to established parties are looser, uh, uh, there are far fewer strong party identifiers, and citizens actually approach uh, 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 elections as a, as a, as a, you know, in, in terms of valence voting, pocketbook voting, electoral economic voting, they make a judgment as to what's good for them and what's good for society. And often their choice is it restricts the expression of their preference. And of course, we see in recent years declining turnout as an illustration of political disenchantment between 1945, which in the United Kingdom is when we uh, uh, have uh, the, the uh, uh, um, we date modern electoral politics. Uh, we've had uh, in first order elections, by which I mean elections to Parliament, electing the House of Commons, not second order elections such as the ones we're participating in today, which historically have lower turnout rates. In first order elections to the House of Commons, we've had a high of 82% in um, 1951, a low of 59% in 2001, uh, and a significant decline post-1997, when we had a post-war trend of around 75%, and now we're hitting around 63, 64% in general elections. So declining turnout can only be an illustration of political enchantment, disenchantment, and we need to explain and explore that. And my own view for what it's worth is I think that uh, uh, there are many ways you can address that. And one small way would be if you were to allow people to register their, their abstention. Uh, uh, has participation to be enabled? Compulsory voting, uh, I'm not interested in and, and I do not favour. And voting, I think, cannot be easier in Britain, particularly if you live in an urban area. My own voting poll is, is, is station is no more than four minutes walk away. Uh, 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 postal votes can be obtained easily. And often, I mean, we had big discussions when the political class declared its concern about the decline in turnout to 59 percent in um, 2001 when Labour the incumbent having been re-elected with a large majority said that one of the explanations of that was people were happy and, and, and content with Labour in government and didn't feel need, ne it was necessary to participate in the polls. Humbug, I think that argument is, uh, uh, but the argument is that uh, uh, it's not you could have it on an election day, have poll by, it can't be easier. I think these are all quick fixes because when voting matters, turnout rates rise not least uh, in the uh, conversations Scottish citizens had in September 2014 about whether they should remain within the United Kingdom or leave and be an independent state, 85% of people participated, a much higher rate of citizens participating than voted in general elections generally or in elections of the Scottish Parliament. 72% uh, 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 voting in the uh, uh, Brexit referenda. So when people are motivated, they will vote. So I think myself, the turnout is is unusual. Uh, 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 the, 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 the voting, whatever the reason, it's not because voting is difficult, complicated and awkward to do. So what explains fallen and falling turnout very quickly because turnout should rise and voters are better educated and more informed. Well, we're better educated and we're perhaps over-informed about politics if we avail ourselves of the opportunity to study it in any form. Uh, uh, elections been a foregone conclusion. Well, we had a hung parliament and threats of a hung parliament uh, 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 in 2010 and 2015 and 2017 when turnout rates did not approach that of the period before 1997. Uh, uh, apathy, the apathetic are always with us. 15% uh, of citizens in Scotland did not decide to participate in the national conversation about the national decision about whether there should be an independent Scotland. Uh, there's not much you can do about the apathetic who often lack social the political capital or social capital to participate, just not interested, other than avail them of their rights, al allow them the opportunity to participate. The reason why I think 
uh, 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 turnout rates are declining is because of alienation. Uh, uh, um, which reflects a degree of political disenchantment. I mean, alienation reflects uh, 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 a number of things. Well, let me let me go back a little. Uh, um, uh, alienation, I think, essentially um, reflects a growing disillusionment with democratic politics. And this takes three forms. One is economic insecurity, globalization, deindustrialization, the rise of less meaningful meals of work, labor market transformation, people being unhappy and, and angry, socio-cultural factors such as the notion that there's them and us, that politics doesn't speak to us, cultural backlashes and status anxiety. Uh, and then, of course, political uh, uh, instrumental reasons, the failure of political parties to deliver, the uh, 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 the fraying of party ties, of fraying ties of party attachments, expressed in changing electoral alignments, the electorate being less deferential, less willing to uh, uh, invest its hopes uncritically in those that seek its support, the belief that there's a metropolitan political elite that is separate from and ant antagonistic to the mass, the parties have withdrawn from society, no longer representative of people, uh, the re by elections are always going to have lower turnouts historically than general elections. Uh, but there was the recent uh, uh, Birmingham Erdington by election, which is a rather interesting case study where uh, uh, two candidates were presented for the consideration of the Labour members in the constituency to select one of them to be the standard bearer to stand for the Labour, ca Labour candidacy. Uh, the successful candidate was selected by 82 votes to 32. Uh, she received 9,413 votes and a 27% turnout, which meant that 15% of the citizenry available to vote decided to vote for the candidate who was elected. There is a disconnection dis 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 between the political parties uh, 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 and the voting public uh, that I think is extremely dangerous uh, uh, and, and, and explains uh, a lot of uh, 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 political disenchantment prompted by alienation, in which voice being diminished can only be expressed by abstention and not recorded by non by participating. There's lots of data out there about declining trust in in politicians. Sixty six percent of citizens, an IPPR report discovered only last week, uh, think that politicians are out only for themselves. Six percent say. Voters have more, have only 6% of voters say that they have influence over political decision making. 70% of people say party politicians don't understand them or their needs. And I don't refer the fact that this last week, two members of parliament have been obliged to resign from the House of Commons, one for being convicted of a sexual assault, the other been uh, 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 admitting to a misdemeanor. Uh, 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 that is disapproved of. I mean, the, the, the political class is just is just increasingly distrusted and and detested. Uh, and I could talk for hours with examples of that, but I'm I'm, I'm not going to. The final thing uh, uh, is that um, alienation is also a feature of political disengagement, uh, 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 not just. Uh, people educated to and beyond degree level are more engaged than those uh, who aren't socially in terms of their friendship groups. If having a settled political identity, fewer and fewer of us do, they see the, the, the need to participate in an election. People of working class uh, uh, status, uh, 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 those traditional vehicles of political socialization, trade unions, friendly societies, the camaraderie of the workplace or factory for parental socialization and party identification have declined considerably and atomization tends to impact these people more uh, 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 and citizens are cultivating, if we may quote Voltaire, their proverbial gardens and increasingly they are, I think, and suspect very strongly, repelled the inadequacy of the political class. If you don't like the choice 
why on earth would you decide to make it? And some citizens, of course, feel an obligation to do so, which is why turnout rates uh, 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 remain well above 50% plus one. So, this is the electoral system where SMPS, two virgins law, still continues to apply, and people are often expected to vote politically in order to elect not their own choice, but the least worst choice to vote negatively, which of course I as a citizen have done on occasions in where I live. As I said, I mentioned it increasingly owes much more to declining levels of trust in government and in politicians and party systems endure. But that party critical class that parties produce are increasingly seen to be unfit for purpose. And this is a statistic that I endlessly bore people with. One of the problems or the major problem I think we have with our political class is that 100% of MPs are drawn from a gene pool of some 1.2% of the population, which is that 100% of MPs are party members, that they join party, par political parties, but only 1.2% of citizens at large do so. We're all free to do so, but only 1% of us do so. And we have a tradition, for good or real, of not electing independents, only two independent, genuinely independent, who haven't previously had a party attachment elected to the House of Commons since 1945, one in 1997, Martin Bell, and the other, Dr. Taylor, in 2001 and 2005, under very unusual circumstances. Um, and therefore, obviously, uh, alienation and political disenchantment has considerable ramifications for the long term legitimacy of the political system and for social humanity generally. So, alienation is a form of political disengagement. How to make abstention count? Well, I think there are many ways that electoral law, you could just record the abstention and just report them. You could have electoral law, which would enable an election to rerun with different candidates. Could 50% plus one of those voting a constituency support none of the above on a particular ballot? Uh, uh, um, you could even have super majorities required, but whatever you do, uh, uh, one needs to be careful because uh, uh, empowering the disenchanted to express their alienation, I think can strengthen democratic politics, but, but also undermine electoral processes. I mean, there are many, many reasons that Weimar collapsed, not least the fact that there are numerous reasons, one of them which, only one, was the weakness of the political institutions of the Weimar Republic to produce stable and uh, 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 from uh, authoritative government. Um, so there are no quick fixes. This is, I think, a modest reform, which needs to be enacted as part of a wider set of radical, political, and constitutional reforms. Electoral reform, of course, which is the subject of considerable debate, is, I think, necessary, but in itself not sufficient to reform the House of Commons. I think there are problems with the political class. It's the candidate you can the quality of candidate you get not the means by which they are elected which is the bane of our uh, lies at the root of our of my concern and our problems of course we had a referenda in 2011 uh, in which reform was roundly defeated by almost two-thirds uh, in terms of the rejection of av as a means and of course we have a variety of electoral systems in place, uh, 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 electing various uh, uh, levels of political governance in the United Kingdom, from SNPS in the House of Commons to AV, uh, supplementary vote for uh, uh, mayors, uh, STV in, uh, uh, in in local government in 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 Scotland, uh, uh, additional member system in Scotland and in Wales in devolved government. So it's a role, but by itself, as I say necessary but insufficient. Constitutional reforms that address the limitations of voting, better linking preference and choice. Uh, I'm not sure the country is ready to govern itself in part by referenda, given the political chasms created by the Brexit uh, outcome in which 70% of uh, rule makers uh, in Parliament objected to the decision taken by a majority of the British people participating at that election. But these are issues in which you can address many of our concerns. And of course, my own preference, in addition to allowing my own disenchantment to be expressed, to reform the political class. We must radically transform and 
the ways in which we select and choose those who make, execute, and administer laws and public uh, regulations, find better politicians and elect more ordinary people with normal backgrounds, normal jobs, and aren't involved in politics, have family in politics, or have been some hack advisor. Uh, I want to elect the toolmaker, uh, not the son of the toolmaker, if I may criticize Sir Keir. Uh, 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 the bus driver, uh, not the son of the bus driver. Uh, uh, um, and uh, 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 um, people who don't go to university and haven't got degrees, as important as an educator as I think that they, they may be. Um, so to conclude then, uh, the proposal to enable electoral abstention to be recorded in report is the following normative purposes. Uh, 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 the first is to help build civic trust by enabling citizens to express their lack of trust in politicians and in the political system. And I think that in itself will re-equip, harden and sustain our political institutions. I think our political institutions, whilst in need of reform, uh, uh, are in danger of being uh, undermined by those we send uh, 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 to person them. Uh, uh, um, and we need political institutions. The liberal democracies need to be sustained. And I think that the political class, the circulating elites that Schumpeter spoke of so long ago, 1947, are part of that problem. Uh, 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 I think it's important to help the apathetic express a form of alienation. Alienation is a positive. No is a very powerful word. Uh, 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 an unwillingness to witness or permit something is the first step in changing it and transforming politics. So the apathetic need some assistance. They're always going to be with us. God bless them. And I sometimes admire them. Uh, 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 but to an apathy into an expression of alienation is an important process. Thirdly, to enable the expression of alienation in the form of political action. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, I doubt ever if this proposal, modest as it is, was enacted, we'd get 50% plus one of people voting uh, uh, none of the above, but we'd get some. And then a long history in the United States, as I say, uh, uh, Lisa Murkowski in, in, in uh, Republican senator in the state of Alaska was elected, uh, uh, re-elected to the Senate in a form of write-in. Write-ins have an honorable tradition in the United States. Uh, uh, and then finally, to empower citizens, even if it's only me, to express their belief that our political system in the form run by present day elites is now unsustainable. And so to undermine, help cast aside the rotten and unfit political class. And my last observation, and I finish on this, enabling abstention to be recorded would empower citizens, protect and enhance the electoral process, and wound and weaken establish failing useless political parties. What's not to like about that? I'll finish on that. 